In today's video, I'll be talking about the latest rocket that I've been designing and building over the last few months since finishing school. This rocket will use four controllable fins to steer itself through the air. I chose to abandon the thrust vectoring approach that I'd used on my previous two rockets, partly because it would allow me to build bigger and faster vehicles, but mostly because I knew it would present some fun new challenges. I'll be going through some of these challenges and how the hardware is designed to overcome them. I decided to place my control fins at the aft of the rocket for several reasons. Firstly, a set of canards at the front of the vehicle would induce instability which would need to be counteracted by a much larger set of static fins at the rear. The second reason was that, from what I understand, vortices produced by deflected canards interact with the rear fins which can induce some complex aerodynamic effects such as the roll reversal phenomenon. Since I had no prior experience with aerodynamics and CFD, this was enough to deter me from using this approach. I also opted to include a set of wings on the rocket, which are placed just after the centre of mass. These should improve passive stability and also increase the lift of the vehicle when at non-zero angles of attack. This will make the rocket much more controllable in the air, which will be key when it comes to implementing position control. So I began designing an ideally precise and fast fin actuation system that could fit within the 66mm airframe. The fins cannot be directly driven off servo motors, because guess what's also in the aft of a rocket? A rocket motor. In this case, a 29mm one, which doesn't leave nearly enough room for four servos. I decided to move the servos above the rocket motor's footprint, and then connect the fins via linkages. The fins are each connected to a shaft, which is printed in three separate pieces to reduce the adverse effects of print orientation. These shafts slot into bearings and have ball joint linkages attached on the end. These linkages are connected to their respective servo motors. I selected these motors from Bluebird, which have a small form factor while boasting very high torque and exceptional speed, on paper at least. Running from a two cell LiPo, the fins can actuate from 0 to 20 degrees in about 0.05 seconds. There was only a small amount of backlash, which seemed to be mostly from the servo gearboxes. These servers are controlled by a new flight computer, which is a GPS receiver, IMU, barometer, magnetometer flash, and a lower radio transceiver. I designed this board in KiCad, and PCBWay, who are kindly sponsoring this video, made it for me. PCBWay provides PCB manufacturing, component sourcing, and assembly services at a very competitive price, which I find ideal for producing these flight computers in low volume. Since I'm pretty useless at SMG soldering, having boards populated and soldered professionally has allowed me to include tiny 0402 components, LGA packages and sensitive chips in my designs without any concerns. PCBWay also provides CNC machining and advanced 3D printing services, which I might be using soon to solve some of my parachute ejection problems, but more on that later in the video. If you're interested, visit PCBWay.com or click the link in the description. I'm going to be doing a video soon on the circuit board and firmware I'm writing. I have some quite interesting solutions to orientation and position estimation, so let me know in the comments if you're interested in that sort of thing. While in the early stages of design, I decided to use four carbon rods to carry all the subsystems inside the airframe. In my last rocket, I had to slide, align and bolt each section individually into the airframe, and connecting cables once assembled was very difficult. With these rods, I can assemble and connect everything with ease, and then just slide the airframe on and bolt it together. The fins and wings can then be slotted through the airframe and attached. They have these 2.5mm carbon rods that interface with the 3D printed parts to take the load off the M2 screws and improve their rigidity. Ok, now onto parachute deployment. The rocket motors that are both suitable for this vehicle and available to me all have ejection charges. These are small devices at the top of a rocket motor, which produce a lot of gas very quickly to eject a nose cone and parachute. Of course, I have all the servo motors just above the rocket motor, so I'm left with a couple of choices. 1. Vent all the ejection gases out of the airframe and use a mechanical ejection system to deploy the chutes, as on my previous rocket. Or 2. Contain the gases somehow and direct them around the servos and cabling, and use them for deployment. As you might have noticed from the long tube running up the airframe, I went for option 2. This BT-20 tube directs the gases up to a break in the airframe where the parachute will be housed. When the charge is fired, the rocket will break in two and the parachute will be released. Now the flight computer will be in the top section of the rocket, which the servo motors need to be connected to. 
I used these DuPont extension leads and fitted them with some fireproof insulation to protect them from the ejection blast. The two airframe sections are connected with a cardboard coupling tube and carbon tubes, which should help keep them aligned. To test this system, I 3D printed an adapter for an 18mm C6 that I had lying around. The actual motors that I plan to fly on are pretty expensive, and I figured that if the rocket deploys with this small motor, it'll certainly deploy with a 29mm F35. So that didn't exactly work, the ejection charge wasn't strong enough to overcome the friction involved. When I opened up the rocket, I also noticed that the fireproof blanket shrouding the parachute burned through, fusing the chute and rendering it useless. I think I'm going to ditch the blanket and design a lightweight cup slash piston that houses the parachute. This should also reduce the friction and provide a more rigid path for the ejection force to pass through. I also noticed that the 3D printed motor retainer was looking a bit worse for wear, so I'll be looking into that as well. I'm going to be posting videos on the electronics, software, CFD, simulation, the launch pad and eventually flight testing for this rocket. If you want to follow along, please consider subscribing. Thank you very much to my Patreon supporters who are enabling me to build these bigger and more complex rockets. And finally, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.